Hey everyone, I'm Jessica here with another solo review and today it's an exciting day because it's freezing cold out there with way too much snow, but I still get to enjoy it courtesy of Super Slopes <laughs> from Button Shy. This is another one of their wallet sized games. And just to be clear up front, I received this copy for free from the publisher to take a look at. So thanks to Button Shy for that. Super Slopes. What is this one about? It's about skiing and snow. <laughs> I love on the front of the rule book, it really gets you into it. You are going skiing. And this is an interesting sort of puzzly game. I wasn't sure what I was in for when I first got it, but it is a really, really cool game about actually sort of building these routes um, as you kind of build them. They're gonna be sort of off you know, offset slightly like this. Um, and you're gonna be placing different cards around, but it's not just about creating your own personal area. And again, this goes up to, I believe, what is it? It goes up to three players. I'm just talking about the solo mode here, which is a little bit different. Um, but you are gonna be creating your area. You're also thinking about what cards the solo opponent is picking up though. So there's actually a nice sort of balance between what do I need and what do I wanna make sure the solo opponent doesn't pick up. There's a very, very cool market mechanism here which sort of goes, I mean, this isn't the, it's gonna be five cards, but you actually stack these up and they go from highest to lowest. <laughs> the card numbers actually determine how you do this. Um, but you actually, when you choose which cards you wanna go with, you pick the, the top card and actually start following down these routes and seeing where they terminate um, in terms of, you know, on what card does it go off the side? Uh, so you can see like this one ends over here. Um, but if you start up at that route, you're gonna be taking the top card. So why, what does this do? This is how you actually decide and make your choices. The solo opponent will always travel as far down that market as they can and pick the lowest card. And this is a really neat mechanism because you also can't just skip through. So if or I should say, you can't end and pick a card that's in the middle of that. So if, if it starts at the top and then goes down to card four, you can't pick up cards two or three there unless you have potentially a special ability because some of those cards are gonna have these icons up here. And as you collect these, you might actually have some special abilities that will help you with the market and help you with your area. The goal that you're trying to create here is a ski run, a connected ski run that goes through all different elements. There's gonna be energy you pick up along the way, which will help you travel through these forest spaces. And there are, that's right, the Yeti. <laughs> there are some Yetis out there that you need energy to go through. And there are different types of points that you can pick up along the way. You're only gonna be able to score one type though. There are multiple types you'll see out here. Um, but in your run, you can only score however, you know, whatever one is the most that you have. You're also looking at some other scoring criteria about the number of the cards as you're traveling through the run. And it's really pretty neat. The only thing I will mention is that you kind of have to have, I'm trying to think how to describe it, but you, when you're done and you have all your cards laid out, right? you're not gonna have like a highlighter to show you exactly what your route is because sometimes the route will double back on itself, worth extra points actually, um, or it may kind of like twist and turn and you gotta kinda travel along there and be able to follow it uh, just with your own eyes. So that may work for some, it may not work for everybody. I encourage you to definitely take a look at screenshots and how this game plays. Uh, to maybe make a decision about whether it's for you or not. I am somebody who does not do well <laughs> with a lot of these sort of uh, figuring out the pattern or seeing these things, but I will say I did not struggle much with this. Um, I think there was a little bit of a learning curve in being able to see that, uh, the line and follow it as I was going along, but it was actually pretty easy. I would say the legibility here is, is pretty great. Um, and those, those lines sort of pop out without, you know, being like this bright yellow or something <laughs> that does not look like you're skiing. Um, it is, it's a really cool sort of puzzle though. I enjoyed it a lot, um, probably a lot more than I figured I would. Skiing, 
not my theme. I think I, I learned how to attempt pizza, make, make a pizza way back when I was a kid, abandoned any hope of learning how to ski and just went tubing and, you know, left it at that. <laughs> So I am definitely somebody that will ski on a tabletop sort of area, but not in real life. And this was actually really neat. I've been trying to talk about sort of what solo games do and how they sort of like feel when you're playing them. This is another pretty quick one, five to 10 minutes probably, maybe 15 because there are some thoughts about, you know, where do I want to place this and everything. Um, no turn is going to be boring. You are very focused the whole time in terms of both watching that market and seeing how that plays out. Especially again, in the solo mode, you've got your area and what you're trying to look for, but you've also got the solo opponent who's gonna be picking up points based on the cards that they get. So you got a lot of things to kind of keep track of and think about as you're going through this. Um, I trying to think how I would describe it. Um, as you start, you know, you have a very open area. You're gonna start with, you know, one card. Here's my ski run as I start it. And being able to sort of picture, okay, can I get a card that sort of like puts this curve right here and I can connect everything? That's pretty challenging uh, to think about. And it's just kind of cool though, to see how this pans out. Um, I have seen a couple of plays where people actually managed to create a run I think that went through every single card they used which was pretty impressive I haven't gotten there <laughs> I continue to try um, because this is a, a very fun sort of puzzle again and I really just like how there are different things to think about on these cards I do sometimes forget about the abilities though I will say they're very useful but I found myself sort of focusing so much on connecting up my routes that I forgot, oh, I have a bonus. <laughs> I can do this ability where I can kind of skip around on the market. Probably should keep that in mind. <laughs> but I had a really nice time with this. Um, again, it kept me very focused. Um, it gave a lot of different decisions and different plays played out very differently. It's, it's not like you're gonna be able to create a, route, a ski route um, that incorporates every card every time. There's just gonna be some decisions to make. You might actually abandon your initial plan and have to go with, oh wait, there's a better route that's forming over here, which is really cool. Um, and I would definitely say there's a lot of variety there with just 18 cards. Uh, you see a lot. And again, with that, I really, really like that market. Um, the five cards and how that works in determining which card you're going to be picking up and which one the solo opponent gets. So that again is Super Slopes and especially the solo mode. Again, thanks to Button Shy for sending over this copy for free to take a look at for me to review. I had a great time with it and now I can pretend like I know what I'm doing with skiing, at least because I can play it as a game. But don't ever take me out skiing. Not happening. <laughs> As always, thanks so much for watching. And hopefully you get some fun solo games to your table soon. <laughs> thanks. Bye.